Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to another episode. Today, I am going to be talking about social media Once again, I know I have countless other episodes, but this stuff just changes so fast and it is the number one thing that I think plagues us as an industry. It is so hard to keep up on social media trends, what we should be doing, what other people are doing, and I think it's the number one source of feeling bad about ourselves, honestly. I think nothing can derail your motivation or how you feel about your accomplishments faster than scrolling on Instagram and seeing other people's work because immediately the comparison game begins. So I will never stop talking about social media. I think it's an amazing opportunity that we have. It is a free way to market our business and get in front of potential customers. And as someone who has a very visual business, it's perfect. It's perfect for the balloon world. But it can get out of control quickly, right? Like we all we all know that feeling of feeling like we should be posting more interesting reels or we should have more followers or we didn't get enough likes on something that we're really proud of. It's it's it is a challenge. So today I'm chatting about posting with purpose. And this is actually a phrase that I heard at Balloon Boss Summit last November. Um side note Registration is open for 2023. I will be back once again as an instructor and the lineup is outstanding. If you are looking for some in-person training to really up your business, I highly recommend Balloon Boss Summit. It's linked in the show notes. I can't say enough good things about this event. Um, But the keynote speaker last year used this phrase, posting with purpose, and it has been my focus of social media Since then, anytime I feel like I'm flailing or like I'm unsure or like I don't have direction, I always come back to this idea of posting with purpose because it gives me control instead of opening up Instagram and just starting to scroll or checking my notifications. It gives me direction of why I'm actually opening any social media app in the first place. Why am I there? What is the purpose? So today I'm going to rattle off a couple things that we should be thinking about when we are utilizing social media because it's amazing. I I love Instagram. I love Facebook. It's a pain in the butt, but it gives us opportunities as small business owners to say what we want to say and have it seen by the people we want to see it. So I'm not going to say, you know, get off social media. It's terrible for your mental health. It's really important to have a social media presence. But I think when we all of a sudden have direction and we're posting with purpose, it actually is like social media on steroids. It gives us the control and the direction that we need to feel accomplished, to take care of business, to view it as advertising and fun. And then we get off the platform and we go about our day and about our business. So the first thing I want to talk about is just that, this idea of aimlessly scrolling. When you have an idea, when you're posting with purpose, you are going into Facebook to complete a task. And then you're doing the task and then you're signing off. That is how I have been utilizing social media for the last couple months. And it's really, really been a game changer. So it means my participation has dropped a little bit, but that's what needs to happen right now because I just have so much going on. So I feel like the other alternative is to just forget about social media altogether. You know, you go two months and you haven't posted anything versus hopping on there, taking care of business, and then getting off. And that takes some discipline, um, which is why I think it's important to have a plan in the first place. What am I doing? What am I going to post? Do I have the photo ready? Do I have the caption ready in my head or elsewhere? I'm going to open the app, post what I need to post, and then I'm going to close it. Most people open Instagram, scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, 
check their notifications to see if they have any likes or new followers. Um, maybe there's some messages. You chat with people. You go back. You scroll. You scroll. You scroll. You see something that you like. You know, double tap. Scroll. 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 That in any other capacity in your business would not be tolerated, right? Like imagine if you went into your email, your inbox, and you just like opened an email and then you closed it and then you opened another email and then you closed it and then you went back and and said, oh, I really like that email and then you closed it. Like that doesn't happen. You open your email, you respond, you take care of business and then you get out of there as fast as you possibly can. But it serves a purpose. Same thing with, um, you know, balloons. You inflate, you build, you're done. Imagine if instead you just went out there and you like looked at all your colors and then you browsed all of the cool stuff you've made in the past. And then you went and, you know, inflated two balloons, but then got distracted and looked at your colors some more and rearranged your inventory. And then you inflated two more balloons. Like, That's not how anybody would run their business, right? We're all about efficiency in every other area of our business, except when it comes to social media. It is a huge time waster. I think because we think that we're either learning or entertaining ourselves, and in reality, we're not doing either of those things, right? We're sitting in front of the TV, doomsday scrolling, seeing all of the cool stuff that we didn't make and starting to feel worse about ourselves Um, or we're having fun but we're just kind of distracting ourselves a different way you know it's it's fine for you to really enjoy looking at Instagram but sometimes it's so mindless it's like what else could you be doing during this time Um, so that's kind of the first thing that I have started to avoid in posting with purpose is all of that wasted time just kind of aimlessly bumbling around on Instagram and Facebook. Um, And I will say, I don't do that nearly as much on my Facebook business account. When I scroll there, it's much more business to business. I see relevant things, I comment, and then the pull to stay on and spend more time isn't really there for me on Facebook. So it's a lot healthier, a lot less wasted time. Instagram seems to be where I, I have that never ending scrolling. Actually, that goes back to one of the first books we read in the book club and the Patreon group, and it was called Make Time. And they actually call that type of infrastructure, I don't even know what it's called, like a late, they call it the lazy river. Or no, I'm sorry, they call it the infinity pool. I've heard it also called the lazy river, right? It never ends. It's this, it's this infinity scrolling. And as long as you scroll, there's always going to be more. And that can be on like, websites you'll see that there's always another article to click on but Instagram there's always always more posts and you're just going to scroll and scroll and scroll and their goal is to suck you in and keep you on that platform as long as possible so it's really hard to do because they make it really fun Um, but getting some of those hours some of that time back in my day has been really helpful all right let's move on Um, now the other thing that I used to do that I know a lot of people do is kind of this mental struggle of thinking, what should I post today, right? Like it's been a while, what should I post? But a shift that I have started practicing is instead of asking what should I post, it's why am I posting? And I think that helps answer a lot of questions. Why am I going to post today? And in my mind right now at this moment, I need to generate more sales. I just quit my job. Um, The winter is pretty slow in Wisconsin. So why am I posting? I need to start getting people thinking about graduation season because that's a big time for me. And right now is is about when things are going to start picking up. So I need people to start booking their graduation dates. Now, does that mean I'm going to post the most incredible installation I've ever done? No, probably not. It means I'm going to post some pretty boring columns and some pretty boring party polls and some actual appropriate choices for graduation parties like grab and go garlands. None of that is going to get me 500 likes, but it's what I want to sell. It's it's why am I posting because I need sales, not what should I post this beautiful thing that may or may not help me. So I think taking the emphasis on off of what and placing it on why will also help clarify because um, the next point you want to think about is where am I posting? I think sometimes we just arbitrarily go to our favorite place to post. We post on, well, if it's me, I post on Instagram the most. It's easy. I know how it works. I know how reels work. Like I just, I get it. 
But sometimes I post things on Instagram that would have done better on Facebook. And now a new place for me is LinkedIn. I never do anything on LinkedIn. It's like social media for boring people. I hate LinkedIn. However, that is where corporate people live. And I have a big event coming up that I want to invite some important VIPs to. I want people seeing that on LinkedIn so that they can come and maybe think about balloons for their business. So where you post is just as important as why you post. And I think these two points really go hand in hand. So if I am trying to get graduation um, jobs, I'm probably going to be better off posting that on Facebook, honestly. That's just where more graduation mom at home parties, that's where they kind of come from. If I'm going to really try to push summer weddings, I really want to be on Instagram for that. That is where brides are going to find me. That is where venues are going to link and tag. Um, I'm not going to post wedding decor on LinkedIn. That doesn't make any sense. That is my platform for corporate stuff. So I think asking those two questions really helps clarify how to spend your time why are you posting? Like, what are you trying to generate from this post? And then where is that going to best serve that customer? Because if you're trying to promote to people that aren't on the platform, obviously it's not going to work. So think about why you're posting, think about where you're going to post it, and then you get to the what. I think our trouble comes from thinking of the what first, kind of reversing that order. And we just scroll through our camera roll looking for a really you know, impressive photo posted on Instagram and then we feel like our job is done and we can move on because we posted like we were supposed to. But, you know, whatever. Maybe it's it's better time spent just not posting at all and waiting until you have a relevant sale or item or new announcement. Like I just got new marquee letters made. So now I own them, a set of zero through nine. And I really want to push those because I want people to rent them. So instead of just posting my same old, I'm going to now be posting all about these rentals because I want them rented for graduation season and then birthdays, special occasions moving forward. So just again, to review, you want to think about your um, what last. So don't worry about what you're posting. First, figure out why you're posting and then where you need to post that then figure out what. So kind of the opposite order that most people do. And that, that again, this is this posting with purpose. We are logging in, we are taking care of business, and then we are getting out. And if you need to do a little bit of scrolling in there and leave some likes for your friends and get some inspiration, that's fine. That's just not what most people do on social media. They open the app first, and then they think they're going to get struck with some inspiration about what they should post and honestly I think the opposite happens we end up getting intimidated and we feel inferior and we see what other people are posting and it's not as good of what as what we were going to post so then we end up just closing the app and literally doing nothing and something is always better than nothing even if you're just going to do a really quick story showing what's happening at your workspace, showing the mess, showing loading your van. People love seeing behind the scenes stuff. So that can also be, that can also just be like filler content. If you feel desperate, like you need to just be present on social media, you certainly can do that. But you know, it it really should be like, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to just attract a bunch of new followers that may or may not even be in your area? Or are you trying to sell, in my case, these new marquees. I'm trying to rent them. I'm trying to push graduation. I'm trying to push corporate. I'm trying to push weddings. So that should be my first starting point when I'm even thinking about social media, right? That's, we need it to work for us. We don't need it to just be more noise out on the internet. Um, All right, let's take a break. Um, We're going to hear from one of our sponsors, and then I have lots more to talk about, including some etiquette, some online etiquette um, of how we should be behaving on social media, and then a few more tips to get you going and posting with purpose. Competition in balloon decor is fierce. It's so easy to just get started in balloon decor, but it takes a lot more work to get to that middle position in the market, to get to that top position in the market. If you're hustling in a market and you're trying to fend off the new competitors that are popping up, I would love to help you get a strategy and a website and some local search engine optimization in place that's gonna help your business grow fast. Hello, my name is Jeff. I am the owner of Balloon Suite. 
and I would love to have my team help you get ahead or stay ahead of your competition. You can check us out at balloonsuite.com. We have plans and pricing there, or you can feel free to give me a text at 206-488-1871. All right, welcome back. Just to review, we are trying to post with purpose and avoid that aimless scrolling on social media. So just as a review, we are starting with why you're posting in the first place. Then you're going to move on to where that's most appropriate, which platform. Then finally, we'll get to the what. We we don't want to start with the what. We don't want to start with the photo because yes, we are trying to show off our work, but there's much more power in showing off work that's actually going to generate more sales. So just taking a second to think about why you're even posting in the first place can give you a ton of direction. All right, now let's talk about what to do with your followers? What should we be doing on social media, right? Because I see this trend now and it's not going to stop because there's always going to be a new platform. And right now it's TikTok. And I see everybody trying to push their Instagram followers over to their TikTok or drive their Facebook followers over to Instagram. And I would say that that is a mistake. I think you should meet your customers or your followers, wherever they are. If somebody is already on Facebook, let them stay on Facebook. That's clearly where they want to follow you. If someone is already on TikTok, let them stay there, and those will be your TikTok people. We start messing things up when we're trying to get everybody off of Facebook over to Instagram, and then we're going to focus on Instagram and ignore Facebook. Then we're trying to get all those Instagram followers over to TikTok, and then we're just going to focus on TikTok. I would argue that it's better off having different strategies for different platforms. The people who are on Facebook are not the people who are on TikTok. They're certainly not the people that are on LinkedIn. So I think keeping your followers where they're at is a good plan. However, I would try to get them into email. That is my number one tip. Social media is great, but it is all temporary. It will go away eventually. MySpace was the biggest thing ever, and now there's a bunch of you know, abandon MySpace profiles. Then it was Facebook. Then it was Instagram. Then it was TikTok. And next it's going to be something else. So rather than trying to win the race on all of these new platforms, wherever your followers are, try to get their email. That is the biggest thing. You want to get people off of social media and you want their emails because that is a direct way that you can contact them. When you post on Instagram, you have no idea who's going to see it. Even the people who have clicked and followed and get notifications, even sometimes they don't see it. We have no control. So it is more important to try to get an email because you can always send an email. They will get it. They might not open it, but they will get it. And that's more than you can say about a platform because maybe you do a really great story and people weren't online that day. Maybe you do a post that immediately gets buried. Maybe you do a LinkedIn post, but you know, someone's transitioning into a different role and they're not on LinkedIn for two months, right? Like the people that you want to see your stuff, if they're not looking at exactly the right time and if the algorithm isn't like favorable to you and all the stuff we don't have control over, they all of that energy, all of that posting with purpose, it's for no reason. There's no purpose because no one's going to see it. So instead, if you are going to drive your followers anywhere, don't drive them to another social media platform where you also don't have any control. Drive them to email where you have 100% control. You can you can decide when they're going to see it, when your emails are going to go out, what's in the email. You can have specials. You can have whatever you want in your email. You can have words. You can have videos. You can have links. You have so much more control in an email than you do on social media. Now, this isn't to say that you're going to abandon social media, obviously. I think it's one of the best lead generators. People see your work, they see your personality, and then they want to know more information. But ultimately, I value an email address more than anything else, especially when we get into the realm of corporate clients. They aren't looking at their business accounts, right? Like you might follow a venue in your town and feel like your buddies, but that that social media manager, first of all, isn't the person who's probably going to ever book you for balloons. And trust me, as someone who manages social media for a business um, and my day job that I'm leaving, I don't care about it at all. I do not care. I post what needs to be posted and I get offline. I'm not there like scrolling trying to find talent or 
other businesses to work with. I couldn't I couldn't care less at all. So when you're trying to really like form these bonds with corporate clients, I just don't think social media is the way to do it. That is the place to get their attention and then hopefully hook them with some sort of offer or opt-in so that you get their email. Um, Now, there's a whole other episode about what those opt-ins could be. Something like a coupon always converts really well. You could put together some sort of a catalog that requires an email to get it. You could reach out and say, hey, like, do you have an email? I'd love to send you some information. And you could get their email that way. But don't spend that energy trying to get them over to another social media platform where you still don't really have direct contact. All right, now let's talk about some practical stuff. Let's move on to other areas where you should be, I don't even know if this fits into the idea of posting with purpose, but this is more just being a good citizen as a small business owner on social media. And one of the things that really drives me nuts, and I see it all the time, is when other balloon business owners will post in the comments of other balloon businesses and ask for help. So remember, our Instagram, our Facebook, all of these business platforms are forward facing. Our customers see them. They are the top priority. They can see the comments. They can see the likes. They can see exactly what you can see. So if all of a sudden someone comments on one of my Instagram posts, like, what framework did you use? That is getting deleted so fast. And I also think it's really rude. I think most people don't don't know they don't understand but if I'm trying to sell balloons to my customers why would I ever post in the comments how to make it right like and I also think that's really forward as a as another business owner like I just think it's rude I don't know why you would publicly ask for help making something that someone is obviously trying to advertise send a dm um or better yet invest in education and join a group of people where you can ask those questions, I recommend ballooncoach.com. So this is a group that like I am part of, and this is where I go to ask my questions. Like, how much does this cost? What do you charge for that? What color balloon is that? What is the framework? Uh, Does anyone have a tutorial on this? Does anyone have a template I can borrow? How would you deal with this mean customer? Like, it is my support system where I go to ask those questions. And it's a paid group, which is great because everybody there is also paying. So they're also investing. They're also helping. We're all growing together. I'm much more willing to help people in that situation than I am a stranger in my public comments on my Instagram page. Like that to me just seems so inappropriate. So if you are that person, it's okay. (laughs) Just, Just know that there are better opportunities for you to learn how to do things. Because if someone posts that on my page, um, I'm just going to delete it. Like I'm not even going to address it. I'm just going to delete that comment because my customers are really the only thing I care about on my Wisconsin balloon decor Instagram. Um, However, I do have another Instagram just for this podcast. So that's the bright balloon. That is much more appropriate. That is a friendly community of all balloon people. So comments on there, that's a different story. But in general, you shouldn't be commenting on other people's balloon business platforms unless you're just saying how great something looks. Um, All right, let's move on to some practical tips. So in previous episodes, I have mentioned a few of the tips that I use to kind of pre-schedule my social media. And I think this also really helps with posting with purpose because you've already done it, right? You have to schedule your posts and know why you're doing it and when it's going to post and what platform it's going to post to. I think it almost forces you to have some of that purposeful thought. So I use two platforms. I use later.com and I use Canva. And more and more I'm depending on Canva because it's just gotten so powerful. So there is a scheduling feature in Canva and there's a scheduling feature in later.com. Um, later.com is free. So if you're looking to just get started, I'm pretty sure Canva, it's it's a paid feature to use the social media planner. But at this point, everyone should have a paid Canva subscription as far as I'm concerned. It's so, so valuable. Um, and I will go on there and think about which posts need to go out so that I don't have to remember to post, post those. So 
you know, maybe in a month, I'm going to schedule something about graduation. And then I'm going to pre-schedule another reminder two weeks later. That to me is a lot easier than having to remember to do that in real time. And I think people get in the weeds and they're like, oh, but Instagram doesn't like that. And they, they won't promote your post and it won't do as well. But like, I just personally don't concern myself with that. I've not seen a huge difference between my real-time posts and my scheduled posts. They seem to do about as well. And I think something is better than nothing, right? So if I schedule something, maybe it's going to perform a little bit worse than if I had posted it live. But the truth is, if I was going to post it live, I would have forgotten and nothing would have been posted. So I am a huge advocate for social media planners. The other reason that I like it is because scheduling a post on a computer where I have a keyboard and I can type is a lot faster than trying to do everything on my phone. Even the scheduling apps, they have they have apps on your phone, but I just think it's way easier to be on a desktop. I can import my photos from Google Photos. I can type out a caption. Later.com even has a feature where you can save your hashtags and just pop them in. So there's a lot of convenience features that I am willing to sacrifice some performance I guess you would say because at the end of the day who really knows what the algorithm likes what it doesn't I just figure I'm not even going to waste my time trying to figure it out I am just going to do what makes posting easiest what makes me remember to do it and what puts my products in front of my customers. So for me, that is a scheduler. Um, again, later.com and Canva are are the ones that I use. All right, let's take one final break and then I will wrap up with one final po- point about posting with purpose. Now is the time that businesses all over the country are ramping up for spring and summer balloon decor events, so don't wait in ordering the products that you need. Head over to havingaparty.com to check out their full selection of balloon brands and colors that we need to run our professional balloon companies. They even have a special code for listeners of the podcast. Use Bright Balloon when you check out to save an additional 5% over on havingaparty.com. All right, welcome back. The final reminder is to post what you want to sell. So that is the ultimate secret to posting with purpose. Our purpose is is usually to sell something. So we need to show our customers photos of those items. And I know that seems so self-explanatory, but I'm so guilty of not doing that. So I always think like, oh, this is such a beautiful job. I'm going to share it because I want to show off. But if I just took two seconds to remember, this isn't actually something I want to sell again. The perfect example for me is anything with floating bears. If I could never buy another teddy bear in my life, it would be too soon. I hate the floating teddy bears, but people like them, right? They want all those neutrals for baby showers and the little teddy bear floating as the centerpiece and then the big giant teddy bear as a big centerpiece. And every time I do that job, I take a picture and I post it on Instagram. And then guess what happens? I book another teddy bear job. And it's like, why am I doing that? Yes, I think it looks good. Yes, I'm proud of this work. Do I ever want to do this again? No. So why am I showing it? Another item would be like custom vinyl. I hate it. I hate anytime anything is customized. Yet there I am posting pictures of like 30 custom jumbo balloons with corporate logo vinyl. And they look really great and people get really excited about them. But it's not something I want to sell. So some tips of how to avoid this. I feel like sometimes we're just we're hurting for content, right? We just want to post what we're doing. So you can take pictures before you're done and post those. So the other day I did a giant installation and it was actually using two new rental pieces. So I didn't want to have these super specialized, super custom installations as my advertising. So instead, I just put two latex balloon garlands on the frames. I took a picture. I know that I have those. That's what I'm going to share. Then I finished it off and I put on all the orbs and all the starbursts and all the basketballs and all they had all this custom stuff they wanted added in. But I wanted a simpler version so that I could have a really sellable, really profitable version of this very custom design. You could also do that for, let's say, my bear example. 
at this bear party, maybe there's going to be a garland with no bears. I can still take pictures of that and try to push garlands. Or maybe I'm going to take a picture of the little topiary centerpieces before I add the floating bears. So you can kind of be the editor of your own work and take photos of things along the way so that maybe even you have a good, better, best option. You can show like here is what a balloon marquee looks like at the entry level. Then I added more stuff. Here's what it looks like. Then I added 15 helium balloons and here's what it looks like, the deluxe version. So you can use your own work maybe just not in its final state. So take a second to actually think about that before you go to installs and and figure out what in this install would I sell again? What is the most sellable thing and what does it need to look like in order to post those photos? I think that will be really helpful. It's something I've just recently started doing because normally I'm on site and I'm just like a maniac trying to finish as fast as possible and then I take a photo at the end and then I leave. But more and more I'm starting to do these in progress photos because each one looks like a finished photo but each one is a different price point that I can show my clients in the future and also post with purpose online so some of our both our best most impressive work is actually not what we want to be showing people Um, they'll still ask for it don't worry there are still those custom people out there and you want to show some impressive stuff but it's not It's not what you want every single day popping up on your social media because then that's what people are going to expect and it might not be something that you want to do. Um, I think certainly posting large scale installs, um, work you're proud of, there's definitely a place for it on social media. But if you are going for more corporate clients, then don't post a bunch of pictures of your at-home birthday deliveries or vice versa. If you want to get into super custom, super high-end event planner style installs, then you shouldn't be posting your super low-end $25 centerpieces. So post what you want to sell. And I can't tell you what that is. For me, it's different than it is for you. And it might be different now than it is six months from now. So we get to kind of figure out what we want people to see, what we want them to be excited about, and what we want to push on our platforms so that we can sell more of those items. All right, so that was a lot. Let's just review. First of all, we are trying to get away from wasted time scrolling on social media. Very rarely is that ever going to result in something fruitful for you or for your business. So instead, we are going to post with purpose and think about why am I posting? Where is it most appropriate to post? And then that will dictate what you post. That will be the moment you open your camera and you start scrolling, looking for the perfect post. Um, Also, we want to think about getting people either off of social media via email. And we don't want to spend our energy or their energy, honestly, trying to push them to a different platform. It's totally okay to have different audiences on different platforms. We also want to keep our etiquette in mind and make sure that you ask those questions privately or in a group that it's appropriate to ask questions. Remember, you're not supposed to comment publicly on other balloon businesses, Instagrams or Facebook. It just it for me, it's an automatic delete for a lot of other people. It's just it it makes them frustrated or they look unprofessional. So just keep those comments and those questions private Um, and then Rely on a scheduling app if that is something that would benefit you and post what you want to sell. At the end of the day, social media is a huge advantage that we have that businesses even 15 years ago never could have imagined. It's free advertising. We are in control. We are able to network and get in front of our customers and it's so awesome, but it can be so overwhelming and such a distraction if we're not using it to post with purpose, and generate more sales. All right, that is all. I will see you next week for another episode. Thanks for listening. As usual, I try to keep it bright and light. If you are interested in bonus episodes, check out our Patreon group where I release an additional episode every single week and you unlock more than 50 archived episodes as soon as you join. Check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening.